Hello and welcome, welcome back. This is Redemption Goddess. What do I do on my Saturdays? Well, I catch up on my crime and mystery and whatever else I think of. Now, that chapter is one of the ones that I've, that I've missed a few of their videos in these last few weeks. And uh, this guy kind of narrates the murder mysteries. He may feature the trial if there, you know, if there's a trial, if it's pending. And uh, he shows and gives you the background. He narrates very well. He has an accent, but I, wa I want to really say that I think that this guy's from Ireland, I believe. But anyway, he has a, very, a great channel. I'll link it in the description. This is a screenshot from his description. You can follow him on all these different social media. He has everything. The Twitter, Instagram, Patreon. What does that say? March or merch? Oh, he has merch. Okay. Uh, so he has a few catchphrases and things like that. Um, so he's joined September... Okay, 2017, I don't know how long he's been creating content. I may have been subscribed for a year. We know last year, last year was crazy. And we were kind of just huddled up watching shit. So I got into the murder mysteries. And then I'm, it's another one, John Real. He has a channel. And I think that he's doing documentaries now. Uh, he just got done with the Jessica Reed documentary. Um, both of these. And then I like Bailey Cyrus. That's another one. Now, I wanted to review this uh, with my own take on it. These particular ones that I'll feature today will just have some audio. And the context that I'm coming from is the high value. Because in the black community, we got Kevin Samuels who kind of uh, maybe coined that phrase high value. And it's a phrase that everyone's really using. And women are saying, uh, some women are saying that this is a thing that they're looking for. Uh, and, and you begin to name our professions and levels of savings and credit and whatever else the criterion is for. Listen, I wanted to point out real high value and let you understand, you know, the value is not necessarily in the things. So that's the biggest point that I'm trying to make in all of this, right? I know that our emotions will let us go other different places with this. But when I, when I began watching these, I start seeing a common theme. The common theme is high value. High value man and woman. And either man ends up gone or the woman ends up gone and in one of these children, the woman and all of the children, it's just, it is, it's sick. But the common denominator is what? Evil. Yes, the common denominator is evil. Now this one is, uh, the first one that I'm featuring is with Dr. Martin McNeil. And... This one is particularly sinister and it has a lot of different twists, twists and turns. But I'm only featuring a small portion of the audio because I want you to go over to that chapter and check it out. It's about 36 minutes long, which is not long, you know, for uh, some, you know, a few little seconds of entertainment. And let's see here. Let's go. Of Dr. Martin McNeil and his wife Michelle McNeil and what happened after he encouraged her to have some cosmetic surgery well we already know rest in peace Michelle McNeil we're gonna let him continue old Marty McNeil was a very successful doctor and had a law degree to boot Michelle a beauty queen and they had eight children together over almost three decades however her old Marty I guess that just wasn't enough. You know, beauty queen wife, really rich, doctor, having a law degree, eight kids, living the dream. Easy to imagine, that's never enough. Am I right? Cause it's a, a big ol' whoops. 
wink. This case has it all. Long years. You know, it's pretty long time. It's a long marriage. And you would think by... Okay, so for whatever reason, I couldn't sync that up. They have been... This uh, couple have been married for 29 years. Um, now, there was... A, let me make sure that that little portion didn't play that music. That's the only thing that I'm really concerned about right now. Morning of the 11th of April, 2007. A call was made from Pleasant Grove, Utah, where the mother of eight children, Michelle McNeil, was found unconscious in the bathtub. The caller was Dr. Martin McNeil. Michelle had been found by her six-year-old adopted daughter, Ada. You know what? This is crazy. Now, I've watched this one already. I watched it through. So I want you guys to go check it out. I'll give you a little bit, a little snippet. And probably I I will nowhere near be able to narrow, uh, narrate it as, as well as he does. And plus he has the visuals. Um, but he narrates it well enough that even without the visuals, you know, you can really follow along i'll listen to it while i'm cooking and cleaning and stuff like that so i caught up on some of these murders and i also like the fact that he really highlights the victim you know the victim here miss michelle rest in peace young lady that's so crazy that a person can just uh you know be so sinister toward someone that's why that's why i don't like I, lo I don't like the words of affection. I really don't. The I love yous and the... I, I don't. It's a red flag for me. That's a red flag. Someone always saying and professing. Um, but I'm, I'm learning to be more tolerant of it now because I understand that in society, that's how we express ourselves. But this is what two people... Uh, that said, I love you every day, this man, and you don't have to say allegedly because he, he's already been through. This is uh, 2020, so this is from last year. I wanted to show you high value now. He's a doctor and a lawyer, and this case is so tricky and crazy. They're, they're alleging that he did some mercy killings and some other stuff. And that he that he didn't even really technically deserve his doctorate because he forged trans, uh, transcripts. But still, you see how we still giving him the title doctor, right? He still gets to claim that title, even after them knowing that he forged the transcripts. And supposedly he's a lawyer too. So if you forge a transcript for this, I... Well, I don't know. I take that back. You forge your transcripts maybe to get in. I, I don't know. But listen, this is high value. Now, another dynamic for the Bible thumpers, you guys will enjoy this one. And no disrespect or shade. That's just what I call you guys. For, for those of you that are astute in the Bible, you, you know the saying or you know the verses in there where it talks about being equally yoked. Right? And this woman was Mormon. This man knew damn well he didn't want to be Mormon. Now you heard in the beginning where they where they called her a beauty queen. And so here's their photo together again. As you can see, they were together for 29 years. They aged together. And uh, also you may have heard he was encouraging her or he had encouraged her to get a facelift. And you have many guys, uh, that's, uh, this is why I had to, another reason why I had to jump on here. This is so sickening what some men are doing or using to manipulate us. It is so sickening. Like 
they'll use like these half truths because it it is true that mm, the original concept of a high value man that is true but not in the sense of what they're saying like high value should be exactly what's inside of the title value what you value your morals your principles that's what makes you who you are whether or not you could be accountable that's the value you can have all of the money and all of the prestige and titles and things and and will you do anything to keep that including getting your wife to get facelifts all of the cosmetic stuff, the, the country clubs, the cars, the houses, the Joneses, you know, you put your, your significant other's life at risk or pressure her to do so just so you can look a certain way, right? What, what value is that? Is that value? That's not value. You know, and so when you start talking about salaries, oh, this, you know, well, I make $100,000 a year. I, as soon as you say it out your mouth, I don't believe you. I don't believe you. Because people that have money, they don't like talking about money. That's the last thing they want to tell somebody what they worth and what what's going on with them. That is the last thing on their mind. They want to hurry up and get away from that situation. And some of them are lying and play poor. I came from humble beginnings. <laughs> And I'm just trying to stay humble. They're not going to tell you shit. <laughs> so as soon as somebody says a figure, I'm automatically skeptical. You make what you make, you do what you do. When, when you begin to get exclusive, you sit down, you have this conversation at the kitchen table. You know, the kitchen table is the financial, that's the bank right there. That's where the bank, the bank chairman and the president sit <laughs> at the kitchen table. And you, hey, I'm in debt this such and such. Or I have zero debt. How much debt do you have? Um, and you work that out. What is your plan to pay it down? And please know I ain't going to never help you. The man might say that to you, dead to your face. You know. But I've I've read stories and saw stories where they say that the guy helped pay the young lady's debt down. And that was, if he did, that's beautiful. I hope she was happy and grateful for that because uh, that's a beautiful thing that's a beautiful gift but man mm -mm. wait till these other ones I feature they are gruesome high value that's what you want I'm trying to get your brain from black white uh, man woman and hood and rich and poor and honey Come here. Let me tell you something. Come close. Come close. It is just good and evil, honey. And people make choices every day. And we're e we're evil to ourselves inside of our head. That's where it starts a lot. Uh, you know, inside of us, we're not good enough. Uh, I'm ugly. I'm dumb. I'm this. I'm that. So we do that to ourselves. And then we may have other folks reinforcing it. And so it gets worse. And it starts really, really young. Really, really, really young. That's why it's important to get that foundation. That foundation is very important because without that foundation, you'll have a lifetime of trying to undo all of these unhealthy connections and brain things that you have going on that, that will make your life dysfunctional. Yeah, you have somebody telling you you're ugly, you're dumb, you're stupid. Um, two things can happen. You may think you're ugly, dumb, and stupid, or you may rebel and become overconfident and arrogant and mean and then now you're telling other folks that they dumb and stupid and ugly and that you're wonderful and great you know so it could work both ways um but the undoing of that is going back and telling and, and getting the healthy connection of just accepting you and your shield and improving what you can improving what you can um, what's improvable without surgery, you know, unless that surgery is life saving, you know what I'm saying? That surgery going to save your life some type of way, but for some cosmetic, I, I just personally don't agree with it, but if it makes you happy and 
uh, you can afford to go to someone competent and get it done, do you. But it's, make sure it's your choice. Shoot. I don't, I don't get it. I personally don't get it. But if something was wrong with my nose and I couldn't hardly breathe and this and that, I would want them to be able to fix it. But ain't nothing wrong with my nose. Ears are nothing. You know, if I had some type of cosmetic thing that a dermatologist could take care of, I would. Uh, but I don't have any of that either. So I can't speak from a person's standpoint that got some type of lump on them or maybe something wrong with their eye and they want to get it fixed. Uh, some They lip, you know. Especially domestic violence victims, you got to understand some of them women get beat to a pulp. And then they want to go try to fix some of that damage. Bust the guy, bust the eye socket out and all of this old mess. This is high value shit now. And guess who kicking ass? You got the poor ones that kick your ass because they poor and broke. And, and you know, gutter living, all that gutter living shit is for the birds. And then you'll have the high value one that, that will kill your ass. Straight kill you. Mm. You better find somebody that values life and the moral principles that, that we've been given. And we know what they are. We try to run away from them because we want to lust. The reason why we try to run away from what we know is right. Because we're trying to justify all of the depraved shit that we do. And say. People eat ass. You know. That that should be the first sign. Ding, 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 ding. Shit. Shit didn't hit the fan. Like literally. And, and apparently into people's mouths too. It's the grossest thing to think. It's the craziest thing to think what we are in 2021. Where folks justify evil. They justify that shit. Mm-hmm. And then get mad when you call them out, you know. Or even get mad when, when the evil when evil shit come to them. I at least accept that if you out there <laughs> sowing these seeds, at least. Nope. These cowards can't even accept what's coming to them. You know. But rest in peace to Miss Michelle. She was beautiful. Children, mother gone, eight kids. You know, now I think when this story is really complicated. They got some other little pieces in there where they talk about some Ukrainian young girls they went to go get. And I just thought that that whole situation with him having all them girls, uh, little girls were strange. So that might be another dynamic to look into with Mr. I ain't gonna call him Dr. Damon. I don't know. I'm gonna have mixed feelings of that because he might have forged some transcripts to, you know, move up. Or, you know, not have to, to do some mundane classes that he already done. So, he st- I'm not going to take away the work that he put in to get his PhD just on a whim like that. But he's still a fucking murderer. So, does it even really matter? And he did all of this to be with some other woman. Some other, one, some other young woman or whatever. Uh, again, you can't control your desire. You can't control your genitals no control over our emotions you always hear people you made me mad that's impossible that actually is impossible (laughs) it's impossible okay you chose to get mad at some shit I did or said or looked or whatever you chose to get mad you know and I hope everybody out there y'all keep yourself safe you you whatever trail and this is why I'm really nervous around folks I don't know what's chasing you I don't know what's chasing you baby and I don't want to be around when they catch up to your ass you know people stack them lies up they stack them lies up over a lifetime and they will kill again desire lust financial you got all these little um, agents of, of evil They just cause something different. Mm-hmm. And it's sad. It's sad. But anyway, tell me what you think in the comments. 
and stay tuned for more. Like, share, subscribe. Thank you so much for listening.